Uh, I don't know about you. I'm ready for it. Just as baseball season is ready to start, things couldn't be any better. I want to uh, welcome back one of our alums, Victor Perdomo, is here for the first time since August. He and I are sports buddies, and he's now at NYU. And thanks for coming back to the town hall, Victor. And uh, great to see everyone today. And I hope your semester is going well. And it's going fast, isn't it? Can't believe it. Um, today's going to be a little different. We didn't. We were not able to meet in February. I think it's the first month we actually had to skip and not meet. Uh, at least that's my recollection. Because myself and others, we, we've been on the road at conferences. So as a result, so much has happened since we had our last town hall. And today's going to be uh, even more focused on celebrations and recognitions uh, and a little less on the reports just because of time. Uh, but it should be a really great day. There's a lot to celebrate. Um, first, we celebrate two new colleagues uh, who have joined our community. We welcome R.M. Steinman to the new position of Director of Grants and Sponsored Programs, and Michael Byrne, our new Director of Strategic Marketing. Thank you, gentlemen, welcome. Let me say just a few words about them. Michael has written for a variety of national publications and websites, uh, including Motley Fool. Uh, covering topics such as investing and personal finance. He's also worked in marketing. He's led the launch of a highly successful national newsletter, among other achievements. He's a really superior writer. And very importantly, he's ghostwritten for a variety of CEOs and other national leaders. And I'm looking forward to helping write for, for me. Um, he holds a bachelor's degree in communications from Fordham University. He's currently finishing his MBA with a concentration in marketing from the University of Iowa. And Stein, as he prefers to be called, now he goes, it's R.M. Steinman, goes by R.M. or Stein, but he tells me he prefers Stein, and that's S-T-I-N-E. Uh, Stein brings more than 25 years of successful nonprofit management and consulting experience to Hudson County Community College, much of it related to grants acquisition, management, and organizational development. As a grants professional, he's overseen seven-figure grant awards. I think all told in his career, totaling more than $260 million. He's worked closely with multiple federal agencies, government funders, and myriad corporate, public, and private foundations, including many of the top 100 foundations in the country. And he served in executive roles in public health, education, and social services, and on more than a dozen boards of directors. And in particular, Stein, you you and your career have been involved in uh, projects related to accessibility, accessibility services, um, and also um, um, pro um, health issues, um, including, um, well, I'm having a senior moment, including, um, <laughs> there you go, and HIV, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Stein holds a bachelor's degree in communication studies and political science from the University of Kansas. So Stein and Mike, welcome. We're delighted to bring you into the HCCC family. They're already both very hard at work. So welcome. And are there any other new employees who are joining us today? Yes. Uh, can, you, can you speak in the microphone just so that the folks online, you might have to turn that on. Is that on? Oops. Anyway, my name is Eileen. Yeah. I'm the development coordinator. Yes. And, and I'm an alum. Excellent. Eileen, thank you. I, I, wonderful to meet you. We look forward to working with you. Others today. Okay. We're enormously proud that six Hudson County Community College students have been selected from more than 1,700 student applicants at two-year colleges across the United States as semi-finalists for the highly competitive and prestigious Jack Kent Cooke Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship. Six semi-finalists this year. As many of you know, this scholarship is awarded to approximately 70 to 75 students nationwide each year, and it covers the full cost of their attending a highly selective four-year college or university in addition to the opportunity for continued full funding for graduate study. And Hudson County Community College has a distinguished track record 
when it comes to the Jack Kent Cook undergraduate transfer scholarship. You might recall some of our recent past recipients, including 2021 valedictorian Pedro Morinchel, who's now a student on a full scholarship at Princeton, Abdella Armar, who, who received it in, in 2020 and is now attending Columbia University, Sarah Hayoun, who received it in 2019, subsequently finished her Bachelor of Science degree on a full scholarship from Stevens Institute of Technology, and she's currently pursuing, with Jack Kent Cook, graduate scholarship funding for PhD at Rutgers University. Having six students selected as semifinalists this year is a record. We believe, Ted Lai believes it's a record, or, or if not, it's a near record at Hudson County Community College. It's really quite extraordinary to have six students who rise to this level. And so we congratulate our 2023 Jack Kent Cook Scholarship semifinalists. They are Raida al Hatab, Sally Elwer, Ella Mukasa, Montaha Osman, Burva Pinto, and Michael Salinas. How about a round of applause? Congratulations, phenomenal students. And uh, I think most of them are joining us on the cloud right now. And I'd like to invite any of these exceptional students to say a few words if they wish to speak. Um, and I'll uh, throw it out to you. Um, who wants to be first? We'll wait as long as we have to. Or I can I'll go, first. go ahead. Excellent. That's okay. uh, so I just wanted to say a big thanks to the faculty and staff that have supported me and I'm sure the other students as well um, so that we've even been able to get to this point. Like the resources at Hudson have been immensely helpful. So thank you for that. Congratulations. Are, are, do you know where you might like to uh, attend? Um, so I'm applying to a few schools. So far, my top three choices are Smith, Pomona, and Yale. Very good. Fantastic. Okay, who's next? I guess I'll go next. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, it is an honor being selected as a semi-finalist of the Jack Kent Coke Scholarship. I would like to thank all of my professors, advisors, and fellow students for helping me achieve this. They have provided me with endless support. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Sally. Thank you. Do you, do you have any thoughts about where you might like to, uh, to transfer? Most likely Fairleigh Dickinson. Very good, very good. Congratulations. And next. I guess I'll go next. Uh, hello, you. everyone. Uh, Michael Salinas here. Um, it's an honor to be uh, named in a group of all these high achieving students. It's like, it's an amazing opportunity. And um, I just want to say thank you to the EOF uh, department that's helped me throughout my uh, return to school and achieving all these uh, great things so far. Um, yeah, and good luck to everybody that's named here too. Thank you. Congratulations. Really happy for you. And where, where might you be transferring to if you know? Um, well, I applied to Princeton and Drew University and as well St. Peter's. I got into Drew and St. Peter's already, but I'm still holding out for Princeton. So, well, congratulations. <coughs> Do we have Montaha? Is Montaha here? Or Burva. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm I'm so happy. I still can't believe it. Since like I'm international student, this is a big deal for me. And I just want to say thank you as well for uh, everyone who supported me, uh, especially Professor Lai, uh, Doctor Reber, and Professor Daniel. I, a big thank you for you all. And you actually you don't know like. You actually made my I'm so I'm so nervous and I'm so happy because of that. I I actually have a script, a whole script that I would like to read, but I think I don't have time to, for that. You have a couple of okay. minutes. You have a few minutes. Go ahead. Okay. If you'd oh, like. God. Thank you so much. 
I came to the United States in 2019 from Angola in Africa, where Portuguese is my first language. I left my, I left my family, my country, because I always dream of studying in the United States since there, since in my country, there is a like a, a few opportunities. Leaving my family was hard, but the hunger to pursue my dream was stronger. It was what made me keep moving forward in uncertainty. I didn't know what was waiting for me and what I would make that I, that I would make a family one day that would change my life tremendously. My first day of class was one of the most memorable days here at Hudson County Community College because I met Professor Ruth Caesar, who is already retired. She was my first, uh, she was my professor in level one of writing and grammar. I will never forget her because she always told me to apply for scholarships. Her words were, Berva, always believe in yourself and don't let anyone discourage you. Being an international student doesn't mean anything. They will always have something for you. Just keep it working and looking for it. Those were her words. And this is what I have done. Of course, I had ups and downs like anyone. I already thought like of giving up and returning to my country because of financial difficulties since the pandemic started. I am, um, but Hudson County Community College has always shown me that my dream will come true someday with all the support it has provided me since I stepped in from financial aid to emotional. I will always be thank you to each one of you who has made a huge contribution to my life. To President Dr. Rieber for his unconditional support to all students, including international students. Since the pandemic started, Dr. Rieber, you are a true leader because you always ensure that each one of us has the same opportunity to thrive, regardless of our background. Thank you so much. Veronica, my supervisor, you become a big sister for me, to me. A person who always makes sure that everything is right with me and always has her ears to, ready to listen to me. Thank you so much. Professor Lai, you are more than an advisor. You always ensure that every five data Kappa member benefits from every source available to us. You have told me that I must always keep believing myself and embrace every opportunity that comes my way. Thank you so much. And Professor Daniel, you also deserve a big thank you for all your support and patience. Thank you. Burma, you are, how beautiful. Congratulations. And Burma also was one of two recipients of the Harvey Lincoln Scholarship awarded at Achieving the Dreams conference uh, in Chicago a few weeks ago. Congratulations. Where, where would you like to go? <laughs> to so many places. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go to um, Yale and Columbia, Penn State, Cornell. I'm still applying for uh, hackers. And yeah, let's see who is going to get me. Who's going to be lucky enough? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. We're very proud of you. Thank you so much. And Ra Raida, uh, are you here? Or Mantaha? All right. Well, thank you. Congratulations, students. You are what this college is all about. You, you personify our mission. You all each have an exceedingly bright future. And I want to take this opportunity, too, to thank and express our heartfelt gratitude to Professor Theodore Lai for his mentorship of these and so many other HCCC students as advisor to our incredible Phi Theta Kappa chapter. Thank you, Ted. Ted, I don't know if you're on there, but thank you. How about a round of applause for him? He's an amazing mentor. And while we're congratulating members of the HCCC family, we're thrilled to congratulate two dedicated colleagues who've successfully defended their doctoral dissertation since our last town hall meeting. At least I'm aware of two. And they are, well, we just say again, congratulations, Dr. Catherine Sarangelo and Dr. Uris Pujols. Are there any other new doctoral students? I can't keep track. We have this incredible class of 
colleagues uh, finishing their doctorates. I'm actually, we need to put the list together because over the last few years, it's significant and it's really exciting. And uh, so we're very proud of you. Anybody else that I'm missing? I know there are a few that are really close, some in this room. Okay, we further congratulate Associate Vice President for Trans uh, Information Technology Services, Patricia Clay, who's been named the recipient of an International Laser Fiche Visionary Award. Laser Fiche, as many of you know, is a provider of content management and business process automation. And in announcing the award to Tricia, the CEO of Laser Fiche, Carl Chan, said this. A strategic information technology leader specializing in a holistic approach to higher education technology, Patricia Clay focuses on using technology for an inclusive environment that fosters student success. She's put her leadership expertise and foresight at the service of Hudson County Community College and the higher education industry, leading digital transformation initiatives at the college and co-chairing the EDUCAUSE Higher Education Information Security Advisory Committee. I didn't even realize she was doing that. Congratulations, Tricia, and we celebrate with you this significant HCCC point of pride. Congratulations. <laughs> but let's not stop there. At last Thursday's meeting of the Board of Trustees, five of our outstanding and valued faculty colleagues received tenure. We congratulate Instructor of Mathematics, Fidelis Foda Kahuo, Instructor of English, Karen Galley, Instructor of Engineering Science, Dr. Clive Lee, Instructor of Medical Assisting, Dr. Jihan Nakla, and Instructor of Chemistry, Dr. Fatma Tant. These colleagues will be promoted to Assistant Professor, effective next fall. They spoke beautifully at our Board of Trustees meeting. In the interest of time, I'm not going to ask them to speak now, but I do want to take this uh, opportunity to congratulate these uh, members of the HCCC family who we hope will be here for a long time. Congratulations, colleagues. Recently, colleagues across the college were recognized with the NYSOD and the League for Innovation Excellence Awards. The NYSOD Excellence Awards, and that's National Inf Institute for Staff and Organizational Development. These Excellence Awards were established in 1991 to provide NYSOD member colleges an opportunity to recognize individuals doing extraordinary work on their campuses. And each Excellence Award recipient receives a unique silver medallion engraved with the University of Texas and NYSOD insignias. NYSOD's sort of housed at the University of Texas. Uh, uh, please hold your applause. We congratulate, and this is in alphabetical order, I think. Karina Aran Aranjo, Allison Bach, Miriam Betancourt, Lisa Bogart, Dr. Stephanie Kalo, Heather Connors, Jacqueline DeLimos, Jason Figuera, Darla Ree Franco, Jenny Henriquez, Karen Hosick, Dr. Daryl Jones, Dr. Eric Arakashian, Carmen McGuire, Joseph Matchley, Craig McLaughlin, Callie Martin, Catherine Morales, Fabiola Ocean, Dr. Rafaela Pernice, Doreen Pontius, Carrie Wong Zhao, Stephanie Sargent, Kathleen Smith Wenning, Michelle Vitale, Dr. Allison Wakefield, and Dr. Burl Yearwood. Congratulations for your excellence and thank you. And the League for Innovation has been dedicated to informing, inspiring, and celebrated, celebrating innovation in learning, teaching, staff development, and student success for 20, 55 years. Since 2012, outstanding faculty, staff, and leaders in the community college field have been recognized with League for Innovation Excellence Awards. The honorees have made a significant difference in the lives of students and in the communities their colleges serve. We thank and congratulate the following colleagues who've received the 2023 League for Innovation Excellence Award. Tony Acevedo, Eric Adamson, Daisy Baeza, Dr. Jeanne Baptiste, Anita Bell, Dr. David Clark, Tricia Clay, Dr. Chris Conzen, Dr. Heather DeVries, Chastity Farrell, Michael Ferlis, Matt Fessler, Veronica Gerasimo, Karen Hosick, Dr. Ara Karakashian, Matt LeBrake, Jose Lowe, Lori Margolin, Sylvia Mendoza, Jedediah Palmer, Dr. Rafaela Pernice, Doreen Pontius, Lori Riccadonna, Dr. Paula Roberson, Dr. Gretchen Schultes, Dr. Kathy Seidman, Catherine Sweeting, Jeremiah Typen, John Argola, Dr. Burl Yearwood, 
and Lalisa Williams. Congratulations, fine colleagues. You make us all proud. I hesitate to ask, did I leave anyone out of either of those? I went back several times and tried to make sure, but I hope I didn't. On Saturday, our college community hosted another sensational open house for prospective students, their families, and members of the community. Faculty and staff from all academic schools and offices across the college welcomed and engaged with hundreds of attendees. Uh, in spite of the weather, uh, we had a really strong turnout. We thank all who made this such a welcoming, positive, productive, and proud day. And we offer special thanks and appreciation to Dean of Enrollment Services, Matt Fessler, and his outstanding team. And thank you all for being involved. There were people across the college. Congratulations. Thank you. And I think that deserves applause. <laughs> but like, they, like we say, maybe... Maybe, maybe to a fault, it seems like I'm saying this several times a day, events like this truly take a village. So kudos and many thanks everyone. Last week, Professor Joseph Gallo's riveting play, Yuppies Invade My House at Dinner Time, was presented in its world premiere at the Deneen Hall Gallery. And the play is a gripping review of the history, and gentrification, history of gentrification in Hoboken. Its production is supported by numerous grants and foundations. Joseph, congratulations and thanks so much for sharing your exceptional and thought-provoking work with all of us. Congratulations. Our second annual HCCC Teaching and Learning Symposium on Social Justice in Higher Education held several weeks ago was a huge success. Over 725 individuals from 34 states participated in this year's virtual convening. This is a significant increase over last year's highly successful inaugural program. Participants represented 132 two- and four-year colleges and universities, including 35 New Jersey colleges, 15 historically black colleges and universities, and two international colleges. And the symposium featured 50 presenters, including pioneers and thought leaders from throughout the United States and beyond. This annual HCCC Teaching and Learning Symposium on Social Justice in Higher Education has quickly become an HCCC hallmark program and certainly a significant point of pride in our shared commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We thank and congratulate Center for Teaching, Learning, and Innovation Director Dr. Paula Roberson and all who participated in the four-day virtual conference. Truly phenomenal. Thank you, Paula, and everyone. And while we're speaking about DEI, it's now my pleasure to invite Vice President for DEI, Eurus Pujols, and PAC Day Co-Chair, Rafi Manjikian, to offer an update. Eurus and Rafi. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you go first? No, you go. Well, um, it's great to see the, uh, the students and other recognitions and the incredible experience that they're able to, uh, to, to undertake here at Houghton County Community College. So today I just wanted to give you um, a few updates of some of the uh, work that we're doing. Uh, first, I wanted to give you an update on the Opportunity Meets Innovation Grant that uh, we received a few years ago. It's a two-year grant, and it, it was awarded to us in the summer of 2022 to provide a safe and inclusive space throughout our college community. We're now in the tail end of the grant and it will conclude in September uh, this year. And um, you know we're really happy to report that we've been able to provide quite a few programs that are gonna be able to be sustained long-term at the college due to this. The, uh, namely, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Student Passport Program and the eCornell Diversity, Equity, and Certificate Program. Uh, the, uh, the, the Passport Program will be absorbing to the student life and leadership and will live under both offices as a full online enrichment program for our students. To date, there are 60 students enrolled. This is what's happening r right now. And the program has a 99% engagement rate. Uh, I'd like to thank all the individuals who uh, work on this and have made it possible. Veronica Gerosimo, Deliana Costa, Amala Ackburn, Diana Galvez, and Natalia Barquez uh, Barkins. Uh, moreover, as a measure of sustainability to ensure that our employees continue to receive DEI training, um, Lecturer Richard Walker and Natalia Basket Barkins uh, created a six week DEI training course on campus, on campus and uh, that will launch in the spring of 2024. 
So as the eCornell program kind of goes vanishes, then this program will step up to provide the opportunity to continue the, the training, right? Uh, the training, the training provides a nuanced approach to DEI training and addresses issues for HCCC staff, faculty, and faculty providing regarding principles of success, equity, inclusion, diversity, and non-discrimination for employees. Another important initiative is the partnership of OSHI, PAC Day Goal, uh, Goal 3, and the care team um, for the care and concern team. Uh, by providing Alice on ground training. This is a proactive measure to ensure that our college community is ready to face anything that might occur on grounds and that members feel confident, safe, educated, and more, uh, you know, more information is, uh, is going to come on this. We're also happy to share that we have additional Title IX and gender equity training. Uh, coming up on Tuesday, April 18th, and then Wednesday, April 26th. A total of four sessions open to all students, faculty, and staff will be available. And, you know, we should be circulating the flyer either uh, today or tomorrow. And it's going to be based on case studies, similar as we've done in the past, just so everyone could understand how these things happen and how they relate to, uh, to, to everyone. You know, how, how do they impact your respective roles here? Um, Further, uh, we're also supporting and working with the Student Government Association as they also host a panel about Title IX gender equity. This program is a follow-up uh, to the Is On Us program. Uh, some of you might remember that we held uh, a feature video that we share uh, college-wide talking about the importance of, uh, you know, if you see something, say something, Title IX gender equity and whatnot. So we're working with, with Sally and the other members of the uh, Student Government Association to provide that and also the um, Student Life and Leadership Office, as well as Student Affairs are also involved supporting the effort. Uh, the DEI office, uh, th this semester also rolled out a DEI student liaison program. This program supports internal HCCC students, and that provides a learning, um, service learning or in internship, and also an external undergraduate or graduate students internship, externship, uh, for people that are going to school in other colleges who are interested in creating a safe and more inclusive uh, ACCC college community. <laughs> so they will be able to work at our office or in some other uh, offices throughout the college that will be able to, to place them. But it's a really uh, great opportunity for, for students. Um, any, any, if you come across any student or you know, if you're a student who are interested uh, in participating, just reach out to Natalia Basket Parkins in our office to make sure that we're able to get you there. Um, also, we wanted to take an opportunity to talk about the Method of Administration Civil Rights Compliance Review for Career and Technical Education that concluded March 10th. Um, that, was, um, that was at the end of uh, one long week of interviews. We had about 75 different participants. Uh, we have over 25 interview sessions with faculty, students, administrators, and everyone in between. So they, they wanted to ensure that everything um, you know, that we're providing services uh, according to the guidelines provided by federal and state law. Uh, the New Jersey Department of Education auditors spoke warmly about uh, our students and how it was a pleasure to engage with them. They articulated similar sentiments for our faculty and staff, stating the staff seemed dedicated to working with both part-time and full-time students to move students forward in their uh, career goals. They also spoke uh, dearly about our recruitment admissions, accessibility, and advising services, and the excellent and tailored services being provided to, to all students, that they, they felt that it was clearly making a difference in the lives of students. And also, I wanted to highlight that they noted that they've never seen a display of, um, of so many academic support services provided to students in this capacity at any other institution they have audited. And that's a credit to, to, to all of you. In the next uh, 60 to 90 days, they're going to be providing us with, uh, with a letter to, to the president. And, you know, we expect uh, only good things there. Uh, Hudson County Community College will host Dr. Um, Antonio Flores and other leaders um, and members of the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities in a full-day campus visit. That's going to take place on May uh, Thursday, May 4th. The day's program will provide opportunities for members of the college community and the greater community to interact with Dr. Flores and other members of HACU. The visit will also allow New Jersey uh, leaders and community members to learn about the organization and explore potential partnerships. Uh, the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic Creative Place Making Leadership Summit will be hosted at HCCC, right in this building, 
Uh, they're expecting uh, about 250 highly committed community leaders from the Northeast, uh, in Eastern United States and beyond. Uh, they, uh, they will be at the college and they are really heavily involved individuals in the community, civic matters and whatnot. And the college is going to be heavily involved in the in this program. Dr. River is going to be co-leading a presentation uh, titled Leading Gentrification in Houghton County. Some of us are also going to be talking about our, our arts uh, sector and how we are using that to engage the, the greater community of Houghton County. And of course, uh, Michelle Vitale will be providing a, a tour featuring parts of the uh, College Foundation's permanent art collection, and, and as well as the as the gallery. So more more to come on this, and also uh, Waves of Change Contemporary Peacemakers exhibition uh, is currently ongoing at the gallery right now. It's going to be there this week and next week. I would like to encourage you to go and take a look at it if you have not had an opportunity. It features um, or chronicles one uh, a visit that Dr. Martin Luther King came here to Jersey City and pretty much highlights how that spill over into many of the other social change activism to, to the area. So it's, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to look at it. And finally, um, I'm happy to share that our colleague, Natalia Basket Barkins, was just selected by the National Alliance for Partnerships in Equity uh, as the Heart and Hope Award winner. Uh, please join me in congratulating her for this well-deserved recognition. <laughs> And you know, thanking her for her commitment to our HCCC family. And with that, I'll stop talking and I'll pass it on to my partner in crime, Rafi. Thank you, Yuris. I wish Natalia was here, so you know she could have. Oh, she is. Oh, Natalia, everybody gave you a round of applause. So good job. Thank you, uh, Yuris and Dr. Reaver covered a lot already, but I would like to. Um, showcase some events that already happened. A lot of events happened in the months of February and March, but two in particular, at least, that I was a part of and had a lot of help with, uh, PAC Day, along with the School of STEM. We had two Women in STEM events. The first one featured Dr. Bernadette So. Uh, she gave an hour talk about her, you know, path towards where she is today. And we still get a lot of emails and a lot of feedback about how great the presentation was. So I really thank Dr. Bernadette So for taking the time to do that. I know she's a new employee and she didn't have to help out. And she didn't have to do it because she just started in January. So I was very appreciative that she took the time to do it. I also want to thank Ronnie Canales and Brian for helping out with the event as well. So the other event that STEM had was a STEM panel. It featured Dr. Swati Karamti and Laurel Samuelson, as well as others who showcased their paths and answered questions that students had about being women in STEM and overcoming the obstacles that they faced in order to get where they are. Uh, the STEM panel was created by uh, Dean Yearwood, Ronnie Canales, Faiza Fayaz, Dr. Nadia Headley, Dr. Rafaela Pernice, and Dr. Fatma Tat. Uh, Dr. Reber already uh, mentioned Joe Gallo's event that occurred last week. I heard it was really good. I was unable to attend myself. I talked to Joe before. I wish I was able to go, but I had a prior engagement, but I heard it was really nice. So yeah. Uh, speaking of the goals and the subcommittee, so goal one, co-chaired by Veronica Gerasimo and Anina Bell, they're really focused on food diversity efforts. So hopefully soon you'll be seeing different food options for you and you'll be able to, you know, hopefully eat at all the events that we will soon have. Uh, goal two primarily is oh, co-chaired by Mirta and Dr. Chris Conzen. Goal two has finished the exit interview questions. They're solidified and they're being sent to HR and hopefully they will be incorporated into the exit interview. Uh, goal three co-chaired by Tejo Parekh and newly elected co-chair Kathy Smith winning. Like Yuri said, they're working on the ALICE training for on ground, working with Caesar to make that an on ground practice training. And goal four, co-chaired by Dr. Paula Rosen and Alana Winslow. They're incorporating DEI into the classroom, but they've also worked with COL recently. So this is from Matt LeBrake. So the Center for Online Learning has updated their online course quality rubric to align with national best practices and institutional priorities. The new rubric includes updated accessibility standards and newly added standards focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. COL asked PAC Day to review the newly added DEI standards, and we all agree that these will go a long way forward in ensuring the principles of DEI are infused into the online curriculum. Uh, some upcoming events that are occurring, uh, Yuris mentioned May 4th already, so I don't really need to say that. But one that's upcoming that uh, Professor Winslow and I 
uh, have chaired and we have a committee is the uh, Holocaust and Armenian Genocide Commemoration on April 25th at 2 p.m. We have two guest speakers. I brought um, a second generation survivor and Professor Winslow brought a Holocaust survivor. So they'll be sharing their stories and how those events impacted their lives and how they came to be and where they are today. Um, if you have any other things you would like to have Natalia and I work on or do, please let us know. Thank you. Wow, so much happening. Thank you so much, Iris and uh, Rafi. We really appreciate your leadership. And thank you, Natalia. We didn't think you were going to make it today, but uh, you're, you're there. And uh, thank you for everything you're doing and your wonderful leadership of the recent um, MLA visit for career and technical education. Well, we're all reeling in the excitement of receiving the 2023 Bellwether Award for Hudson County Community College's Hudson Scholars Program. The college was one of only two community colleges nationwide to have been selected to compete in all three Bellwether Award categories among top 10 program finalists in each category. And we were one of only three colleges to receive a national Bellwether Award, one in each category and Hudson Scholars received the Bellwether Award in the Instructional Programs and Services category. All told, we brought home four Bellwether trophies. I feel like I'm always like a sports commentator, <laughs> but these are truly points of pride. We brought home four trophies. Uh, we were called up four times to get our trophies and get a picture taken. Three as a finalist in each category, so one in each category is a finalist, and then one, of course, for the national Bellwether Award honoring our Hudson Scholars program. And this placed our college number one in national 2023 Bellwether recognition for best practice programs, and as determined very importantly by independent national judges who were at this conference incognito watching all of our presentations and our displays and behind the scenes uh, giving us points and deciding who was going to win but it was really a phenomenal experience. I want to thank and congratulate all of our colleagues and friends who participated in the presentations of our three top 10 programs at the Bellwether College Consortium's College Futures Assembly in San Antonio, Texas at the end of February. For our Gateway to Innovation presentation in the Workforce Development and Planning category, we thank Associate Vice President for Continuing Education and Workforce Development, Lori Margolin, Director of Workforce Pathways, Anita Bell, and Business Enablement, Enablement Leader from Ernst & Young, and a member of our Gateway to Innovation Advisory Board, John Sasso. And for our Building an Engaged and Inclusive Workforce presentation in the Planning, Governance, and Finance category, we thank Vice President for Human Resources, Anna Kropitsky, Vice President for DEI, Dr. Uris Pujols, and Instructor of Criminal Justice, Jonathan Cabrera, who presented a phenomenal rap at the conclusion of our presentation. And for the Hudson Scholars presentation in the Instructional Programs and Services category, we thank Director of Advisement, Dr. Gretchen Schultes, Director of Institutional Research and Planning, John Orgola, Hudson Scholars Counselor, Mackenzie Johnson, and Hudson Scholars student, Natalie Jimenez, who really stole the show. Uh, so, Congratulations, everyone. Uh, fantastic, fantastic event. <clears throat> During the week preceding the College Futures Assembly, 24 Hudson County Community Colleges uh, college faculty, staff, and students attended the annual Dream Conference in Chicago that was attended by over 2,200 members of our national community college sector. And we all enjoyed opportunities to present several times on HCCC best practices and outcomes, including Hudson Scholars. At the conference, HCCC was introduced as one of 16 new and reaffirmed ATD leader colleges in the three, 16 in the 300 college network. And as I mentioned earlier, Burva Pinto was recognized as one of two students chosen to receive ATD's Harvey Lincoln Student Scholarship. And joining me at the kickoff meeting of the Racial Equity Leadership Academy, or RILA, which was held during the, green, uh, the Dream Conference the day before, it was a full day kickoff, uh, were Dr. G.N. Baptiste, Dr. Daryl Jones, Anna Kropitsky, and Dr. Uris Pujols. 
RELA is a two-year project funded by a grant from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. And the project is designed to support teams of leaders as they develop bold strategic racial equity plans and implement actionable change efforts at their institutions. The Institute sponsored and led by ATD and the University of Southern California Race and Equity Center. Our involvement in RELA will include multiple meetings, both virtual and on ground with higher education RELA teams. So they're teams that were chosen from across the country uh, that we'll be coming together with as we each do our work and sharing uh, our experience. We will also have multiple engagements with uh, coaches that have been assigned to us, one from Achieving the Dream and one from USC to support our work. And that, that will include a visit of our coaches separate from our Achieving the Dream coaches, but integrated in that work uh, here at Hudson County Community College, I think this fall. So congratulations, everyone. That's, that's all that has been phenomenal. And you can applaud. I think we should applaud. <laughs> um, and as we're talking about student success in all of its forms, it's a great pleasure to invite our gifted colleague, Dr. Heather DeVries, to offer an update on the continuing comprehensive work of the ATD Dream Team and Implementation Teams. Heather. Thank you so much, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, so I am coming fresh from an ATD engagement. We were asked by ATD to um, share a little bit about our journey and our successes and the transformation being part of this network has had for us um, with a college, a community college in Virginia who was thinking of joining. They're kind of at that pivotal moment. Um, so we're spreading, spreading the news about all the good work we're doing and it's being noticed um, at, on the very last day of the Achieving the Dream conference, the closing plenary. Um, we were at one kind of huddled, huddled around one table. We had forgotten to reserve seats. We were three tables. We required three tables for our very, very large, large family in attendance. Um, but whatever, you know, people were trickling in and it was the last day and we were winding down. So we were all kind of huddled. There had to be maybe 12 or 14 of us around one table kind of huddled together. And from the next table, someone wanders over and just says, you know, introduces himself in his community college and just says, I've been, you know, there's really something I've been watching you and there's really something special about how Hudson moves, how you support one another, how you all sit together, um, and really just wanted to know more about our work. So again, we're really kind of spreading the good news and people, people are noticing um, and really trying, I think, to follow how we, how we move and really seeing the impact Achieving the Dream has had on us. So kudos to everyone. That's something we can all really be proud of. So we did have 24 participants at the Dream Conference and multiple presentations, including Paulina Sanza, who is a member of the SGA Executive Board, who presented with um, Dr. Schultes, Dr. Reber, and John Argola is on the Hudson Scholars Program. And let me tell you, for that session, standing room only. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Dr. Gar Renee Garcia, our data coach, um, during the session, who was just he's speechless, really. I mean, he was amazed at the presentation and the outcomes this program has had. And he said, I thought I knew. We, we've been part of conversations about this for the past two years. We get updates. But he said, I had no idea the impact was of this magnitude. Um, so we continue to engage with Dr. Garcia and Dr. Fifield, our leadership coach. Uh, we do have two additional coaches through the Racial Equity Leadership Academy, but Mary and Renee are still with us, no one worry. And they will be back with us for their final visit of this academic year in a few short weeks, April 19th through the 21st. They will dedicate one one day or perhaps a little bit more to continuing to meet with our pre-nursing and nursing implementation team. And kudos to Dr. Catherine Sarangelo, Lisa Siegowitz, and Dr. Lori Bird for their continued leadership of that. And really to everyone who plays a part on that team. I know that team is a real true collaboration as so much as what we do, but a true collaboration um, across many, many, many functional areas. And then we will also use their final visit of this academic year to bring the college community together once more for a data focused event of some kind, tentatively in my mind, calling it a data summit. We're looking at the afternoon of Thursday, April 20th, a save the date and some maybe a rough outline or agenda will be coming out soon. And thank you to John Scanlon um, for being my partner and putting, putting that together. So stay tuned for that in for that information. And then the other key feature beyond pre-nursing nursing and Hudson Scholars, which you've already heard about um, in our ATD work is ESL. And so much of that has fallen under the umbrella of our Title V 
grant, Golden, the Golden Door La Puerta Dorada project, and we just submitted the annual performance report for that. A grant year runs October 1 to September 30th, but again, there's a little bit of a lag, and we just submitted the outcomes for year one, which are, again, very, very impressive. We learned of the award of the grant on fairly short notice, and everyone has just mobilized that we've launched two new pathway courses for our introductory and beginner levels of ESL students. We have two new skills for success courses. Thank you to Jed Palmer and Dr. Stephanie Kahlo for their work in, in that huge, huge lift to get that off the ground and up and running this semester. So stay tuned for some data and outcomes as the semester winds down. Um, we've also launched the Hudson Helps Resource, not the Hudson Helps, Hudson Helps Resource Center Alive and Well, the ESL Resource Center. Um, through the grant as well, thank you to Kenny Fabara, and we have it on both campuses, which is really, really remarkable, and just a way for students to access workshops, um, tutoring, and other really support services in a very holistic manner. And then finally, professional development. We've done week-long professional development series for the past few semesters. We're looking at speakers we can bring here, and we've been sending a lot of our amazing faculty and staff out to kind of share about the good work we're doing in ESL beyond. So thank you to Dr. Paula Roberson for her leadership on activity three, and thank you to Dr. Allison Wakefield for her leadership as, as well. So everything is moving forward with Achieving the Dream, and I did learn on the call this morning with one of our counterparts at Achieving the Dream that it is exceedingly rare for a college to be eligible and awarded leader status after the initial three-year commitment. I think we were one of two colleges either this year or in recent memory. So it is, it's something we should really, really be proud of and celebrate. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Heather, and um, thank you for the leadership you have provided every step of the way uh, for all that we celebrate. It, 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 it's interesting, Dr. Karen um, Stout, you know, is a national thought leader, very highly regarded across the nation for her work in leading Achieving the Dream. She was really busy on Twitter. I'm not a Twitter person, but I see some things that come in. She was tweeting all weekend, and uh, she tweeted, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Denise. I hope, I hope you're okay with this. One of the tweets, her national tweets, related to Denise Rossoli's new uh, credential um, that was also featured, I think, on Friday, if I'm remembering correctly, in Diverse Issues in Higher Education, a really beautiful piece. Would you be willing, I'm putting you on the spot, would you be willing to say a few words about that? Hi, everyone. Um, so I was approached by a um, writer to be interviewed for Diverse Higher Ed. They were doing um, a article on social advocacy programs. Um, Richard Walker was the person at our college who wrote it. It is under the human services curriculum. Um, so they interviewed me for it, and it was very last minute. So it was very hard to reach out to other people for assistance. But um, I have to say our community came together really quickly to help me um, come up with um, answers and make sure that everything was okay with what I was saying. Um, so I thank Jennifer for helping and Allison for helping with that and Dr. Jones' support um, with the article as well. Um, and they just, um, one of the interesting questions that they asked, which I thought was really interesting, was the last question that they asked, was with um, education kind of being doubted by people now, why is this program so important? Um, and I really think that was a highlight of the article, was um, to highlight the social mobility that we offer our students, um, as well as that we serve so many underserved students. Um, that come from underserved populations, that this gives them the opportunity to learn how to appropriately advocate for their own community. So we give them the tools and send them back to be community advocates through this program to really make a difference. And if college doesn't do that for you and put you back out in the community to make positive change, what basically is our point. Um, so I think it was a really good article. They interviewed my, me and um, another college, community college in Jersey that has a similar program. Um, but it was really nice to see our program um, get highlighted, and I really want to thank Richard for doing the bulk of the work. I know I got credit in the article, but um, he did all the work writing the, um, and the hard part of writing it. I'm just kind of putting it into fruition now. Um, but it's really nice um, to be part of this program and really, as we just opened, so it's really, really new, um, but it's getting a lot of positive responses from students, which is great. Thank you. So thank Denise. you. Thank you. Congratulations. Is Richard here today? Are you here, Richard, by chance? Well, thank you for your leadership uh, in absentia. 
Plans are well underway for our May 2023 commencement that will be held again for the second year at Red Bull Arena in Harrison. Please join, please plan to join us to celebrate our graduates and their families on Wednesday, May 17th, beginning at 11 a.m. And we have established a rain date, which is the next day, Thursday, May 18th. I want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Lisa Doherty, Dr. Nicholas Chevrolati, and all of the many members of our commencement planning committee for their leadership and support. And now we open the meeting to questions, comments, and topics of celebration. So for those here in the Scott Ring Room, please approach the microphone so everybody can hear you. And for those participating virtually, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Comments, questions? Yes. Hello, how you doing? Is, is the mic on? Is that mic on? Do we know? Yeah. I think you have to speak really into it, but. Um, um, first and foremost, um, my name is Keith Bowens. I'm an intern at um, Ruckus. I interned with the um, AWPP. And um, I um, really appreciate interning um, at Hudson Community College because I do get to see the DEI. Um, also, one of the things that I do is when uh, a person is released from um, jail, I um, escort them around to different um, programs and um, activities where um, they could um, be able to change some of their thinking from um, incarceration because we got to remember that they're coming from a different environment um, when they first um, is released. So my job is to probably give them something different, like some kind of like purpose in life where they can see, you know, that they don't have to continue to make those kind of um, decisions that they made. I'm once a part of the um, criminal justice system myself, and I have um, thus far um, cleaned up my act, basically. And um, what I basically want to say is thank you guys, because when I do take them or bring them to uh, different um, departments and show them different services, it's always like they're welcome, like it's never where they feel as though that they're not a part or like they have some kind of like barrier that will um, um, deter them from not um, trying to get what they need to get to improve their lives. So again, I'd like to thank the um, Hudson County Community um, College um, faculty and staff for being welcoming to these um, groups of people. And um, I would like to see a little more, you know, probably some more inclusion, but everything is great. But I would like to see a little more inclusion for them as well. And this, that part is just the advocation that I just mentioned. And I thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, it's we didn't talk about it today, but um, this is such an important priority for our college, all the work we're doing for um, incarcerated citizens and reentry citizens. And uh, we thank Heather and Lori uh, who co-lead the work. Uh, it's growing in both areas and um, we're really committed to this. And absolutely, uh, we want to fully welcome all of the students in those programs uh, here on our campus and as members of our family. So thank you for those comments. Okay, others, yes, Kathleen. You me Keep okay, but this is to uh, run off of what Keith just said. So a couple of things in the gallery with the peacemakers exhibit, there is an entire wall dedicated to uh, artistic pieces from the New Jersey reentry women in criminal justice journal. And the pieces include tapestries and poems and writings. So on, I believe it's the 30th at one o'clock, there's a writer's talk. And that is from the New Jersey reentry group with Governor McGreevy and Reverend Flores. So that's here in the gallery. Um, Another thing, NJRC, New Jersey Reentry, is always looking for ambassadors. So I welcome you to join me, Dr. Reber, and a few of us that are already here. Some of our students are ambassadors to enjoy, to join us as ambassadors for New Jersey Reentry. Uh, you don't really have to do much other than join as an ambassador and spread the good word of all the great programs that we have. Currently, I have three interns at NJRC, uh, the Kearney Center, as does Criminal Justice, has quite a few interns working over there. So we are tied to the group. 
And another event that's coming up that you need to look for involved on, it's the first Sunday in May, I think it's May 7th, there's the AIDS Walk. So there are, I think it's five organizations in the state of New Jersey that are dedicated toward the AIDS crisis, HIV. And instead of everyone competing with each other, there's a state, that's the day that each, each group walks. So we decided we would join the Asbury Park Walk to get everybody out and uh, walk on the Asbury Park Boardwalk. And that it's a 2.5 mile walk. It's not arduous at all. So I welcome you to join us and you can sign up on Involved. I didn't put it up yet, I'll do it today. That's it. Thank you, Kathleen, excellent. Others, questions, comments, concerns, suggestions? Yes, Christopher. Christopher, who's our new full-time web manager. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you, thank you. So as what Dr. Reber said, I was recently uh, appointed to be your official manager of web portal services as of February 22nd. So thank you for everyone who believed in me and thank you for all your support. So I just have a few updates that I wanna share regarding the website. So I have a few notes here. Um, if you haven't heard already, we have uh, a new updated directory on our website. So I'm pretty sure um, uh, some of you may have already seen it. Uh, Dr. Lisa Doherty was nice enough to send out email to say like, this is what we have new now. So so if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you can go to our homepage and all the way at the bottom where we have the footer, we have a link that says directory. So uh, we've been receiving a lot of feedback such as information where uh, perhaps there's like misinformation or like perhaps contact information is incorrect. I have been receiving those and also uh, other feedback where perhaps we may have missed someone. So I thank you all for your feedback. If you continue to find something that is perhaps wrong, so I encourage everyone to take a quick look at it, make sure you're in there and send uh, an email to website at atcc.edu. So that will come to me and I'll be notified and I will make those updates. So I haven't uh, done any published updates yet, but for those who have already submitted to website at hccc.edu, thank you. I am still reviewing all the information that comes in, but those will be being published uh, throughout the week. So thank you for your patience. Um, also, uh, I also have here, oh, and one more thing. For all the in people who are listed in the faculty and staff directory, uh, part-timers are not included yet. Please note that this is only for those uh, our full-time faculty and staff, but part-timers will be uh, added into the future. Now, for some of you, uh, you if you're included into the directory, you may notice when you click on your name, some of it is still empty, such as a profile picture or uh, perhaps a short bio. We have, uh, we are preparing a smart sheet specifically for that. So please don't start uh, emailing website at hccc.edu just yet for all those information. So we'll be sending out a public smart sheet for uh, our faculty and staff to fill out so that we can get that information into the webpage. So uh, that will be coming soon. Uh, the next update I have here is uh, changing all the words from division to school throughout the website. So as I mentioned uh, before, even though it may sound like a small task, but it's actually a very big project because as you know, division may need, mean like, you know, as a, like a part of a department, but it can also mean the math term. So it needs to make sense throughout all the web pages. So uh, I just want to thank all the deans who have uh, already gave me feedback for all that so I could start initiating a workflow. Those updates will be starting soon but with a priority on uh, web pages that are mainly visited that contains those words and those will be prioritized to be changed first and uh, moving forward we will have the entire website have those uh, words be changed and updated so again thank you for your patience um, I also received uh, feedback for that uh, there are new programs that are being processed. So a big thank you to Heather DeVries, Victoria O, oh, and uh, Irma Williams for working with me on that. I still have to link more updates into the website so that it matches with our college catalog. So I'll be reaching out to respective content owners to get that started. And hopefully uh, we will be able to have those pages out there so that the public is aware. Uh, so that's all the updates I have and thank you. <laughs> Christopher, thank you so much. Are there any questions for Christopher about anything related to the website? Well, thank you so much. So yeah, we've, we're navigating from division to school for the most part, and we're navigating from department to office or center. Uh, so thanks 
for all the the, uh, the work you're doing to help us get updated and for everything. It's really great. Uh, now, we do have quite a few faculty headshots already in BIOS that were in there. They, they, they should still be in there. Uh, and it'll be great to have everyone else. So thank you so much. It's a, it's a work in progress. We really appreciate your leadership.